Good morning and welcome to an Asian Core Toots tutorial. Now my former channel, not former channel, but my other channel, uh, Asian Core, is a more generalist channel. What I'm trying to do is just clean it up and put some clean new tutorials on this. And so I hope you'll enjoy. Today um, I had a request from a friend of mine uh, to create a watermark in Illustrator. Now, today we'll be looking at uh, this little watermark here. Uh, my inspiration really was one of the Pixar's A Bug's Life uh, font, but this time I'm going to be using a leaf instead. So we're not going to make it too big, we're just going to show you how to make a watermark using Illustrator and a really nice looking font. All right, so we're going to create a new document, and I'll be, I'm using um, CS5.1. Um, you can do the same thing in the latter versions. So, new document, my width I'm going to set because my image width is 1440. Uh, Height is going to be 954. Press OK. Alright, now I have an image here. Uh, this is a picture in Negril, Jamaica. Really nice place. So, I was looking at some bugs like pics. And so I'm just going to pull this picture inside and Oops, wrong um, one. I'm going to pull this inside. Here inside the document, and just drop it in. Now, image size is really small at the moment. What I'm going to do is just scale it up uh, to fit the canvas size or the artboard size, rather. Alright, so we have our image here. And what I need to do first of all is I'm going to create another artboard using my artboard tool. The left side, I mean, you can always use the shortcuts if you know them. I'm just going to pull this over just to make a um, artboard with my uh, watermark. So I'm going to start by using um, a nice font. And you can choose any font you want. Uh, for the last one, I use uh, Candal, I believe. Kandal or Kandara. So I'm going to change the font to black. Yes, black. I'm going to call it Nature, M A T U R E, too small. Just going to zoom in. Nature, right. Nature, and it's going to have photography. So just click that there, create another one. And it's nice to use two different fonts as well. To give it a little interest, photography. So we're just gonna pull that down, kind of try to get it to line up. I usually like skipping through. For this one, I'm gonna use uh, another one of my favorite fonts. It's Caviar Dreams. Uh, it's a very beautiful font, nicely crafted. You can download a font like this from um, Font Squirrel. is a site I recommend. You have access to a lot of fonts, and you can use them commercially without um, any persecution or prosecution. Alright, so we have nature photography. Now we're going to make this a little unique. We're going to change the U. We could change the E as well because this one more likely looks like a little leaf. I'm just going to do both of them. Because the E already has this shape, what I'll be doing is this. I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm simply just going to click here and click there just to create that leaf shape. There you go. Cancel that point. Close it off about here. Close that off. Rejoin it. We have our first leaf shape. Now one of the things you want to make sure that you're doing is you don't want this text to be editable anymore. So I'm going to convert it from a text to a outline which is going to turn it into geometric points so whereas we could edit it before right now we can't not as a font anyway but we can pull out points and get to do whatever shape we want another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to merge these two using my pathfinder options and i'm just going to choose unite and that's going to pull those points together the next one I want to work on is here inside this U. I want to create a leaf shape as well. So I'm going to go into outline mode. The shortcut is Control Y. 
or CTRLY, not control. Uh, if you're using a Mac, it's you know the Mac key with the Y. And I'm going to use my direct selection tool, right? So I can edit the points directly and just take them out. So I selected them, press delete. Um, I get this one solid shape here. Even so, I'm going to close the shape anyway by clicking on my pen tool. P is a shortcut for that. Click and close. Now I need to actually create a leaf from scratch. Now I want to kind of look just like this. So what I'll be doing is just a little way off here. One. Press out of the inside. A little curve there. Click. Carry it out a bit. Like so. Carry it over here. And then I'll just come back around like so. And that creates a relatively decent leaf shape. I can always pull out the points like that, holding control. And here, this one's a little too large. So I'm gonna pull it in and slide it. Right, now that we have a leaf shape in the direction, and this is a little bit off, so I'll just pull this over. Now that we have a leaf shape here. We can put this on top of this, but notice that they are both black. So I'm gonna change one to white using my eyedropper tool. Put something on the background because it's white already. Or you could always directly change the colors by going here as well. Alright, so once you've done that, I'm just gonna pull this down. Try to get the shape big enough so it, it kind of just fills out that you nicely. And I'm just going to pull this over here, like so. Mm, kind of want it to be like a stock. So it's a little closer. So I'm get that part out of the way. Alright, so I'm going to pull this up a bit to here. And I've gotten my leaf shape. If this is comfortable to me or to you, Depending on what you want to really do, you can always um, choose to even rotate the shape to get the desired effect. Right, so. Hmm. I'll just get the top. Oops. That's what follows slightly the contour and pull that part in as well. Now, once you're comfortable with the shape you have, there's only one more part to really be doing, and that is to pull out or take out the leaf out of the shape. Let's pull this back a little bit. Right. So we're going to go on the same Pathfinder options. Uh, right now we still have two shapes here. These are grouped, so you don't want to really ungroup them. So I'll use the same direct selection tool again and create a highlight of the area I'm going to be working with. Now these are two different set of paths and to use Pathfinder you need at least two. So we're going to go back in there and this time we're going to be using the second option, which is going to take the white out giving us a simple shape so once we're done with that now we have one two well everything is there we're going to group the whole thing Control g to group we can always right click and choose to group or ungroup no longer need this and what we're finally going to do is just pull this over here right like that nature photography now it's a little black and kind of want to be white. So I'm going to just change the colors to white again. That's white. And we also want a little background there. So I'm going to use a rectangle and it's the same white color. At first it might seem a little confusing. 
but I'm just going to lower the opacity to about 20% and you get that very soft but very noticeable background and if you want to kind of put a little thing on there you can and that essentially is how you create a watermark there are many other things you could do to it uh, for instance give it a shadow or so if you wanted to but I think this will suffice for this tutorial so I hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and God bless